Okay, welcome to this free lecture. Now, this lecture is to back up my jewelry design course where people are having problems with the Ringmaster. Ringmaster can be very temperamental, so I just want to show you. In fact, I haven't even loaded it into my latest version of ZBrush, which is 2019. So I'm gonna show you how to manually resize the ring nice and easily and show you how you can sort of reset sizes and stuff. So the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, create the base. Now, what I'm looking for here is a ring of about 16 millimeters in diameter with a three millimeter metal. So the inside of the ring will be 10 centimeters with three, three millimeters either side and a height um, or the, the width of the ring, depth of the ring will be five millimeters. All right, so to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the um, cylinder 3d and i'm just going to drag that out in here now at the moment it's choosing um the sizes their yeah, default sizes zbrush sizes and we haven't set any scene scale which we need to do i'm going to go straight into edit mode and i just want to make some little tweaks to this i'm going to go to initialize and i'm going to bring these divisions down to three here and i'm going to put 16 in here just to give me a simplified mesh here and the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make that a poly mesh 3d now what we can do inside here is we can set a scene scale and we can use the measuring tools in here so if I go into um, scale and I just turn off the gizmo 3d then we can have a look and this will give us a skies now it's just units so it's saying two units up here in the left hand side pay attention to this area because this will be where all your sizes will be displayed so it's not actually a size it's just zbrush size like two units like two units could be two you know two miles um two millimeters two centimeters it really makes no difference to zbrush because we're just talking about a numeric amount however we can set the scene scale so it does reflect real world sizes and we're going to do that now if i turn the uh, ground on oh by the way i always turn perspective off when i'm working like this i'm just going to turn this ground on and you'll see this ground here and i'm going to go to the z plugins and i'm going to go down to the scale master here now i've got it set in millimeters you can choose whatever you like this will set the scene scale and the first thing I like to do is just make sure that you're working with this ring base should be in the center. If for some reason you've moved this, let me just turn gizmo on and move this out of position here. Let me just center this and off center that. Okay, so I'm out of position. All right, I'll put it over here. If we wanna get this in the center, just make sure you hit center sub tools to world and then it will drop it into position there. Okay, so with that done, what we can do now is we can just make sure we're using the ZBrush Scale Unify. So I'm just gonna click that once. You're gonna see some things change in here. We're gonna hit that a couple more times after this, but don't worry. So we've now set this. We haven't set the scene scale yet. If we go to our scale tool here, turn Gizmo off again, and go here, you're gonna see up the top, it's still saying units. So we need to fix that. So we're gonna to go to the Z plugin and we're just gonna say, right, okay, set scene scale. Now down here, you're also gonna see that you can put an amount in here. So I'm just gonna set the scene scale, do it one by one, and it's gonna come up with this. This is basically telling us that this object width, the X, Y, and Z axis is, or the width, depth, and height is two millimeters by two millimeters. And that's what we want at this moment. So I'm gonna click that and nothing much is gonna change. However, if we come over to here again, make sure the gizmo is turned off and we measure across, you're gonna see up here, it's actually giving us a amount now. It's giving us 1.9999 millimeters, pretty much two. So um, that is now a scale. If I was to send that out and use a 3D printer, it would print that out at two millimeters, okay? Or 1.9999. So, um, Right, so we don't want that. We want the actual radius of this to be um, 16. So I'm gonna hit 16 on here. I'm just gonna hit enter and you're just gonna see all of these go to 16, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna resize the subtool. So I'm gonna hit that and it's gonna go massive and you're gonna lose the ground because the ground is there. So we need to just set a unify um, we need to unify the scene again. However, before we do that, I just want to show you this. 
you click across here click to here you can now see it's 15.9998 millimeters so let's go in here and unify zbrush scale unify let's just hit that what you're going to see is the ground will come back so it's basically spreaded it out so now if i go to this and i measure it again you're still going to see it's 15.999 so this has given us this 16 mil but we still need this height the height is wrong so we have this 16 by 16 16 cylinder so we need to adjust the height so what we can do is we can create a helper block so if i come in here and i'm just going to turn off lock ratio sliders and i'm going to put the y which is the up yeah see up on this into five and i'm just going to hit enter there and i've turned off all notice i've turned off all and i'm going to do new subtool i'm going to click that and what you're going to do is you're going to get a box now if we look at this box and we just measure it so i'm going to measure it across here you're going to see that that is 16 well it's 15.99991 and down here is going to be five because we put those measurements into here now this means that i can come back to this tool and i can use it as a guide so i can just go into here turn this on i can even put this into transparent and i can go back to my gizmo now and i can lock this into the middle by clicking that little point there and now all i've got to do is i've got to resize this down so i can resize it down i can zoom in just to make sure i'm spot on and that should be cool and now I'm in that bounding box. So now if I measure this, I'll just turn this one off temporarily. I measure this across here and measure across. We got 15.998 uh, across here, 15.998. Down here, if we measure up, we got five millimeters. So we've created now the ring base. So now we've got to just create the inner piece of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to duplicate it out. I'm also going to polygroup it just so that it's a different color because if we switch between them you can see they're both green. So I'm going to go down to this one and I'm going to go down to the polygroups and I'm just going to group visible. There we go. So it's a different color. So now I can see the difference between these two. So this one in particular now I've got to drop this to 10 millimeters. That'll give me three millimeters either side for my three millimeter of thickness to the ring. So in order to make this two or 10, sorry, I'm going to come into here, I'm going to hit slider to subtool size. That'll just give us our size here. And inside here, I'm going to hit 10 and I'm going to hit enter. And this will go to 10. I don't care about the Y at the moment. Make sure all's turned off. Otherwise it will resize the other subtools as well. This is really important. Right, let's click resize subtool. That will drop down now. And if we measure that and measure across, you can now see that that is 9.99. So what I can do with this now is I can use this as a Boolean. I'm gonna turn the floor off and I'm gonna go into the scale tool here. And I'm gonna scale this up. Let me just center this first, center it in there. And let me just scale this up. Okay, so now if I turn the other ring on here, you can see I've got this cut out going through here. Well, what I can do now is I can activate Boolean. So I can go in here, activate Boolean and I can go in here and I can do a subtraction. I'm just going to turn these all off. Let me just turn that one back on. Go into draw mode. Okay, there we go. So we've got it. So that's acting now as a Boolean. If I put that there, you can see that's the core. So in here now, if I measure this, let's do some measurements. By going to my scale, turn this off. If I measure from here to here, it should be three, which you can see it's three. You can see here to here should be 10, okay? And across here should be 16. So I've now got this exactly the size I want. It's worth saving this out as a base. Now I've got this holder here that we got the size from. I could actually delete that out. And then I could save this file out as a ring, 16, three millimeters, etc., etc. So you've got it as a base guide. But this can now be worked on. So you could just now create a new mesh from this. You could go in and, because at the moment it's Boolean. So what I want to do is go down to Boolean, create a Boolean mesh. You're going to see a U mesh appear up here. And if we go into that, you can see that even if I turn Boolean off now, 
that's no longer active and you can see there so what I can do now is I know this is the right thickness and stuff I can start doing my sculpting on top of it so I can go straight into Dynamesh now I'll probably put a setting of about 250 in here to keep the resolution and then I click Dynamesh um, and I've got this piece of course you know you could also um, subdivide it up as well you might get it going a bit weird here um, it's probably best to actually retopologize it using some of the Z remeshing tools in here. Uh, let's go to Z remesh. Let's increase, let's put the poly count about 2000. Let's say freeze the borders and hit the remesh. Oh, got a problem detect edges let's turn that off okay and we've got something like that which you can then subdivide yeah now of course you know I've got it it's quite blocky because I used a low poly um, base mesh with that so make sure that you use a, a higher base mesh with that if I divide that up I could go over this ring now and smooth it all up or probably better would be to go in and use a deformation smooth and smooth it up here like that but this is something that you could start to sculpt on and you know now that size is the right size across and the width etc so yeah maybe start with a mesh that's a little bit um, more resolution into it I mean it's not a problem because I could always go back to this original one because I know it's the right size I could come in here and then I could divide this up so I could divide this up to like five. I could come into this ring section here and divide this up as well if I wanted to. Make it smooth as I like. And then I could do a Boolean of this. I could turn the live Boolean on again. If I wanted to, I could go around and smooth it up a bit. And then I could come in to make a Boolean mesh. That'll appear up here. And then I could go in and maybe use some scaling at the side in the middle hold the control key just to bring this in like that like that and then have something like that of course you know you can go around and smooth it off but I'd probably yeah if I was you I'd start with something a little bit um, higher resolution for the base of it but hopefully that's giving you an idea with scaling and how to measure things uh, by the way also in here which is kind of handy you have the ability to actually create I'm going to take this back to no sub divs here that's good let me just take this back there we have the ability to actually add a helper cube as well so if you go in here you can see down here I've got a one unit helper cube you can click that and that will give you a one by one cube now you can't see it because it's so small um, and I'm in I haven't got it turned on let me just turn live boolean off where are you should be in there can't see it that's weird oh there it is there okay made it a bit, a bit bigger it's so small there it is so if I was to measure across here that's giving me a 0, 0, 0.00 so it's a kind of a helper cube so you can see there you could go in there and move that around and use that so you can get really you know quite 
quite accurate measurements using just little helper cubes that you can put in you know so I wanted another unit in here I wanted a new sub tool based on something else um, I could go in here and set this so if I wanted this to be 10 as well 10 by 10 by 10 create a new sub tool there that'll give me a 10 box just going to solo here and measure that nine 9.9 .9. that's a 10 millimeter box so you can see you can use these tools to generate stuff and then you can just come into these bits and um, come out solo and then you could just scale that down you could go into the gizmo here and you could scale it down to here maybe use this turn this on and then I know if I scale that down there that's going to be a 10 millimeter circle there which if I measure if I turn this off and measure using the transpose you can see I've got 10.0289 so that's how you can kind of measure and get these things more precise like I said if you wanted to um, you'd probably be better um, using a cylinder that's just got a bit more resolution in it around at least around there so I could come into this and go okay let's just whack a lot of resolution into here turn that on I think I'm gonna put some caps on here as well some subdivisions down there you can have an inner radius as well that can be helpful make that a poly mesh 3d come in here and say right what's the size of that let's make that 16 by 16 by 5 and resize that doesn't work probably need to just set this resize and that is now 16 so if I go across here and measure across you can see that's 16 that's 16 there but of course I can come in here and I can go right okay I want a new block so I'm gonna make this 5 on the height hit enter and I'm gonna make a new sub tool here a helper, a helper one I'm gonna click this go into scale back into the gizmo center this remember everything's centered turn that off reset it bring this down zoom in there we go now I can get rid of that helper block I don't need it anymore Click OK come back into this check the height of this yep 5.1 with 16 across yep and then I can check the width of this as well and that's what 1.9 so 2 millimeters there so if I wanted to change that bring that in what I can do is I can use polygrouping to do that so I go into the polygroup and I could say group by normals and that would then give me this inner piece that I could select and move in so let me just do that let me show you how you can do that I can go to let's create my helper cube first so I'm going to go into my helper cube here and I'm going to say right I want this to be 10 and by 10 and a new tool there I'm gonna leave that height the same that's okay and then I'm gonna click new sub tool and that'll give me this which is actually wrong and just delete that out lock that up Let's 
wrong as well. Right, it can be a real pain sometimes. Let me just set this. Okay, there you go, 10. All right, just need to reset that. So have a little play around with that. But now I can use this and I can actually mask the inside. So I can go to scale, go into the gizmo, center it so it's in the middle. I can press the control key on this piece, center that, inverse that, bring this in. Oh, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, let me just go to solo so it makes it a bit easier. I'm going to come out of this frame, put it into a fast shader, and we'll just mask, control shift this piece, this poly group in here. Yep, mask it up, control shift and drag, control shift click, sorry, control shift click, Oop. control shift drag to inverse the selection. What's it doing? Have I made this a polymesh 3D? I'm not sure I have. Okay, yeah, I didn't make it polymesh 3D, that's why I couldn't mask it up. Okay, that serves me right for rushing. Mask it, drag it. inverse that there we go so I've got control over that bit so now I can just make my little master one there it is come out of solo back onto this tool go back to the scale scale that down like that perfect turn that off unmask it all back into here, back out of there, back across, 3.06, it should be 10 in here, 10 and 16 across here. Okay, and a higher res mesh to play around with. And we've done that in one, so we haven't even had to boolean it. So the beauty of this is I can now go into something like a Z modeler, go over the edge, go to bevel, um, bevel the edge loop complete, go over this edge, I can bevel it, and I could click this edge to repeat that last step and we instantly can start creating a base for our ring like that so definitely have a play around with in here it can be a little bit fiddly getting used to it but just persevere with it get used to it if it's something you're going to be doing all the time you want to know it inside out so that's how we can get measurements in here um, pretty accurate measurements using those tools all right hopefully that's been of use to you i'm going to bring out a jewelry modeling course part two where i'm going to put this into a much more elegant presentation for you guys